Man, I just finished watching a show about the League of Assassins in an all-female group. It just was on another channel, and was a different League of Assassins. They called it Shadows. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... Arrow, episode 16, Thanatos Guild. Alright, now I, I even, during my Gotham reviews, that I couldn't remember if they called it League of Assassins or League of Shadows on this. But alright, they definitely call it Assassins. Maybe that's part of the reason why they use Shadows on Gotham. Either way, this is a pretty good story and a pretty great idea. One that I'm surprised took this long into the season to get to. But before we unpack all of the stuff about what being the daughter of the demon means for Thea and... Why can't I think of her name that was just in the show? Let me tell you what I do here. What I do is I review stories as they come out and throwback Thursdays. I do books, TV shows, movies, comics, you name it. And then I do theory videos on Sundays. If that sounds interesting, click the subscribe button. And the name is Nissa. That's who I forgot. Remember, we're actually in the middle of a story here, though. Because Richard Dragon has pretty much taken over the city. Oh, I forgot about those police officers. Ugh. And I forgot about all the hypocritical Team Arrow vs. Team Outsider stuff. Ugh. Okay, well, there's also some really good points, but... One more bad from last week, and that is Renee is still in the hospital, where friggin' Arrow put him. But now let's get down to brass tacks and talk about the Thanatos Guild. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Bah, da, na, na. So the B-plot is pretty much all about the outsiders. Even with Renee gone, they're trying to find out what cops are crooked. And there's this whole big thing about whether the captain is. And they find out that... There was something going on, and maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but the drug was vertigo, not part of what the other guy do uses, what Dragon uses. But at the end of the day, it basically comes down to the fact that they needed something for Curtis to do, and they needed something for Dinah to do. And Curtis was cute hitting on the cop, but they really spent most of their time just with the fact that they've been looking after Renee's daughter. Okay. But then we get this chick, and the A-plot. And she is the League of Than the Thanatos Guild. She is what basically Malcolm Merlin set up as a backup in case he had to dissolve the League of Shadows. And in doing so, she is a pretty badass assassin who has put together her own team. But there's another former League of Shadows member, Tigress. This is her from Young Justice, not from the episode because I couldn't find a picture of her yet. And she knows where this map is. But this map is hidden in a puzzle box. I like the fact that they called it the Hellraiser box. But at the end of the day, it felt more like a Laura Croft thing. And since I wasn't happy with that movie, maybe that kind of soured me a little. But I, I still enjoyed the episode for the most part. I loved the feeling that there was a Team Arrow again. I loved seeing Roy up in an Adam in the suit. I especially liked the fact that he just had the baseball cap because that's what his modern comic thing is. And I liked them going after the League. It felt like an old episode. In fact, that's exactly what this was. This felt like a throwback episode. Like it was going, hey, let's take a look and remember some of the good old days before the hypocrisy hit too high, before everything went too bad. And we had some great heart-to-hearts between everyone. I loved Thea and Roy having that little heart-to-heart -heart about her being like, oh, I think it's so cute that you're insecure, and him being like, I don't know, I just feel like you have reasons to stay here. And of course, she does have a reason to stay, because point blank, the League, the Thanatos Guild, is coming after her because she is the way of decoding the map that Malcolm left. And you know what? I'm a little iffy on this. I mean, realistically, Felicity is the one that hacks into it and figures out how to break it open. And the map itself, she scanned into the computer, I mean, for the most part, you needed Felicity, not Thea. And I definitely have to call BS on you needed her blood for that. I want to know what sort of genetic marker she has that is so limited. To, okay, whatever. It's magic. It's just magic. We're just going to accept that we have Constantine in this world, so it's magic. All right, so at the end of the day, they have the map, and they have to figure out what to do with it. And now this is where everything really comes into, whoa, wait a minute mode. Because you see, Malcolm hid whatever this is in such a way 
or it was hidden from him in such a way as to make sure that no one could access it. Well, now we have some fun with this. Raiders of the Lost Ark or Temple of Doom style traps and all. So when the question comes up of what could be so powerful, there's part of me that wanted to say, take three guesses, but the first two don't count. Yeah, but then there's the whole Thea and Roy thing, and it is just amazing. I mean, he decides to go with her to destroy those Lazarus pits. Now, in the comics, there's a whole bunch of them. There was a point in time there was even one in the Batcave. So Merlin knowing where they are and them being mapped means that there's a certain amount of anyone could come back again. But I have to say, the best moment of the entire episode was Thea and Roy going off together. I love the idea of them being able to come back. I love the idea of there being a speedy in the future. I just, right now, kind of like the fact that Team Arrow could use them. And it's kind of annoying they won't have them. But runner-up was Nissa and Felicity going back and forth. Especially with their little dip to dip to dip I love the sister wives joke. That just that just totally hit me perfectly. My mom watches that show even though it's not exactly my cup of tea. And the whole idea of it just made me laugh hysterically. But alright. I really enjoyed this even though I don't really enjoy the season villain. I think this episode is one of the stronger ones we had. We had great comedy moments, we had great heartfelt moments, and when and if Richard Dragon ends up having the new boyfriend of Curtis work for him, I'm just going to be pissed, but overall I liked it. What did you think? Did you think that having a throwback to the League of Shadows was a good idea? Did you think that having this multiple Lazarus pit was good? And most importantly, how do you feel about the two uh, Red Arrows being in the field at the same time? Next week looks like it's going to be another Hero vs. Hero episode, so I'll just be prepared to be disappointed. But for now, if you enjoyed my review, click the thumbs up button and share this video. And of course, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. Join our little community here, because I like to review stories, come up with theories, and I mostly like talking about them. So I'd like to talk to you. Let me know what you've been thinking about Arrow, what you like and dislike, and I'll mention it in my next upcoming videos. Maybe you can even find a way to convince me that there's something really good and something I dislike. So give it a try. Let me know what you love about Arrow. For now, though, I hope you have a good night, and thank you for walking with me through the heart of the stories we tell.